Just to give you a bit of background to Alice, in case you're not familiar with her work, um, Alice graduated from Camberwell um, in 2001, since when she has photographed editorial for um, magazines including Love, um, Pop, ID, who gave you your first um, assignment, um, and also British and Russian Vogue. Um, the films that we're showing this evening um, were created for Show Studio, um, and which love. and also Love. The first one is a love film, um, and the other four were for Show Studio, which is Nick Knight's um, fashion and art website, which um, provides a platform for fashion film. Um, and that was kind of the first thing that encouraged you to to experiment with film, I guess. Yeah, it's the first time I heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, brilliant. So I think we'll go straight into the films and then um, afterwards we'll be having a quick discussion. And thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, I thought what might be interesting to, to start talking about first of all is something that people might not know initially, which is that each of those films was a response to quite a specific brief yeah. from, like from Love Magazine. Like a personal reaction exactly. to a brief. Um, so I thought maybe it would be good for us to start to talk about those. Um, I mean, the first film is possibly the most obvious, um, because it was um, for Sweet Summer Loving. Yeah, um, it was simply a brief um, 30 days of summer, Alice make a film for one of the days of August. <laughs> so, and I drive around the countryside in Essex listening to Dolly to that particular song, and I love England and the countryside, and so I just thought, an opportunity to dress up as Dolly and run around the countryside listening. And wave a dog about in yeah. there. Yeah, oh, the dog was a bonus, yeah, yeah. made the film. Um, it's like a summer puppy. Well, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to see how you could spin out an idea that's quite so... I, I did the brief, so I can say this, that's quite so rudimentary. Um, and the idea that you could kind of create, you know, something that's about kind of encapsulating summer, in a sense. And it, it, it's interesting because it's almost playing on those stereotypes of summer but doing something interesting with them and, and presenting them in a way that we've not really seen before it's just really every time i put myself in a project i think this is your last time alice because i'm not going to be squeezing into much more gucci i'm like 33 <laughs> and that was just like a little excuse for me really to do something that was in my head hmm. um and make it a reality which is why i like sometimes being in the films myself that worked out quite well it was fun i mean do you find that difficult actually turning it back on yourself because it's, it's something that you don't really see from many photographers certainly many kind of male photographers there's the sort of i don't set. mind doing it myself because i've got such a set idea of how i want to behave and how i want to be perceived in it but it's a bit of a logistical nightmare because i'm sort of trying to do everything but, trying to look at it and be in it. Yeah, look at it and be in it. But I've done it a few times now and I've worked with the same people so they all kind of know where I'm coming from and the kind of feeling that I want them to capture, the kind of shots and everything. So I, it's, I don't find it difficult to do. I actually find it easier because I don't have to... So I don't really like directing people, but in a film there has to be some kind of conversation about what I'm expecting. When I'm in it, I can just make it happen really quickly. I mean, the, the, the film after that, The Good Life, um, again, there's a similarity with it in that it's, it's you know, you're a real person and, and they're yeah. real per people actually kind of living their lives. It wasn't about getting models to impersonate people. It was about showcasing real people in their real environments, mm -hmm. even if they were dressed in, in sort of unreal clothes, which is something that's kind I of think, marked yeah. a lot of your work. I mean, I'm dressed in the first film in unreal clothes because I couldn't afford most of those dresses, I don't think. <laughs> but, and it's just an excuse. People embrace it. They're up for wearing designer clobber because it's sort of, like, unobtainable. But I like that they can enjoy it and wear it really well, just as well as a model, a professional. <coughs> I mean, do you see it as a way of, of enabling people to live out their fantasies by yeah, putting totally. them in Yeah, totally, yeah. 
And is that a way of you living out your fantasy as well? Yeah, I'm guilty of that, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, I started looking at, like, who could I be, you know, like, when I was at college, um, putting myself in my own work then, swapping identities with my friends and photographing it. Um, so I've always been interested in people kind of being, like, the best they can be or kind of just taking themselves out of their normal reality, their day-to-day -day lives, and I, I think they're really special, and it kind of really, you know, making a film on them or using them as a subject sort of cements that idea that I do think they're really special. I think India's really special, the girl with the boobs in Vegas, she's here. <laughs> like, yeah, I just kind of think... <laughs> they're under wraps tonight. <laughs> But yeah, I think people, they jump at the chance. I love that. Like, I ask people if they want to be part of a project I'm doing and they, they're interested in doing it. They might look at my old work or something and think, she's going to take care of me and make me look my best. And that's all I'm interested in, really. There's, the good life's slightly weirder. Um, yeah. And I didn't, I actually was thinking, oh my God, I'm actually going to put a camera in front of people. How do I do this? And I... Google, basically, the night before a shoot. I start panicking, Googling stuff. And I was listening to an interview with Mike Lee, and he said, leave some of it to, like, what happens. Like, mm. don't necessarily go. And so that Lady Jean, I knew that she was a dancer, and I knew she could move, but we just sort of made it up there and then on the spot, and she came down the stairs, and she held herself well, and the way she spoke, and her house. And it's interesting, people think that when they start talking, they're a bit shocked by their accents because they maybe think that they're some high society Italian woman or something, but yeah. they're just like, she lives in Romford down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, again, it's, it's kind of weird to talk about that film because I remember when we, uh, again, it was a film that I, that I asked Alice to make for us. and You'd seen loads of clothes that you wanted to... This kind of idea of an English version of this... Parisian bourgeois woman that comes into fashion maybe every three or so years. And, you and know, I thought about the good life. Yeah. It um, reminded me of exactly. that. Exactly. Margot Ledbetter. And yeah. Kind of her as the English equivalent of the chic Parisian woman. But mm -hmm. um, I remember you talking about your aunt that used to cook M&S food and pretend she made it Oh, uh, yeah. Hopefully when my mum broke or... her leg, she'd come around with, like, meals that she'd cooked, but she hadn't. She'd just chucked it out of a <laughs> carton from M&S or so. It's just that kind of English sort of keeping up appearances thing. Yeah. Mrs. Bouquet. Mm. I loved that show. And I think the, the really interesting thing with the film as well is this, this idea of it being... Um, a kind of, which I think you said to me as well as out of all of your films, it's the one that's most like a moving editorial of yeah. what you do. Yeah, because I shot it all on a tripod. I was quite still, and I was. I was I'm not like, an expert at making films or anything. Like, I mean, we made a rig on the Hello Rory one, and I thought, wow, this is Hollywood. Um, but but um, yeah, with. With that film, I used a tripod mainly, but I, I love day day lights, like constant lights, and I was moving them around the subject, and it kind of, you know, ended up being quite an eerie portrait of these women, but I think that's sometimes nice not to do the obvious thing as well. Hmm. I think as well there is that sense with, with a lot of your stills work, you look at, at the stills and you want to know more about the people. Yeah which there is this hidden story of you wonder why that person is, is wearing this outfit and why they are sat in. Yeah, or how I know them or where I yeah. found them or who they are. And, yeah, there was a lot of randoms in that. And actually, you suggested one of the ladies, which yeah. I was absolutely thrilled about and ended up staying at a house at, like, 3 a.m. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Trisha. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd find peop mainly people are my friends or friends of friends and... If, you know, a hairdresser recommended those four sister, uh, three sisters and mm. their mother, who, and that was just amazing, turning up at their house. I was blown away. I mean, I'd seen photos of them before. I was like, is this real? And yeah. I get there, and they, they are real. <laughs> I mean, how fixed are your ideas when you go into that kind of... Because it, it's very different to, to a traditional fashion shoot where you cast for a specific type of model and, you know, you, you know sort of what you're going to get. Well, it's, I mean, it's not really trial and error because it normally always works out. It's sort of trial and it works. And um, <laughs> uh, But, yeah, I mean, I pre-cast before and I've obviously got 
a dream in my head of what I'm going to get. And with hair and makeup people and a stylist involved, you can achieve that. Mm. Um, so I don't... So, yeah, I prefer just finding people. It's sometimes a bit of a nightmare. If I, when I'm doing a shoot and I'm finding people in Cuba or something, you have to give yourself enough time to find the people, yeah. which is hard for the stylists because they've got other jobs to go to and the clothes need to leave and things like that. But mm. you just go where there's no phone reception and then you get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, and again, there's quite a marked difference between... The Good Life and, and Vegas or Bus, which is much more... Vegas or Bus was on my hen holiday. And I started this... I, well, I started working in a way that if I was doing something, like going on holiday, getting married, or go, um, you know, I try and apply it to my work. So <clears throat> I think Nick asked me to do something on boobs. So I got the best bit of the body for yeah. the body <laughs> exhibition. And, um, and I just immediately thought of India, because she's just got the best pair of boobs and she was coming on my hen holiday anyway so budget wise that's all sorted <laughs> and um and we just filmed around my holiday and it it made you know as much as the project was important to my work it was also important to my life just having fun with a friend pulling together and creating a memory that we're now watching tonight like two years on yeah and I, it still feels really fresh to me like that night that day that week it's all a blur. <laughs> it's what happens when you go to Vegas and you're and, and I mean, that's, it's, that's also something that kind of characterises a lot of your work because you've done a lot of... Um, I mean, there's, for me, there's always an element of documentary in it. Yeah, um, it's also biographical, I like to yeah. think. A lot, of peop a lot of people I meet end up being in my work. Um, and it just it becomes your life. It's just my life. There's that and then there's my husband. <laughs> Has he ever been in the work or not? No, he's. I said come at the end tonight as well. I don't want to. <laughs> I just, yeah. Because, you know, I try to be, I just don't want to be, I'm not like a typical, I don't know what a typical fashion photographer is really, but I don't go to shows and I don't really, you know, I just live on, in the suburbs and I kind of like that, um, you know, that way of life and then applying these briefs and then using mm. fashion in that as well. It um, makes it more unique, I think. Mm. An original. I mean, is it, because I also think there's. I mean, you've done stuff with, um, you know, you did the the series with Versace, which we don't have because it isn't a film. It should have been a film. Really. It should have been a film. Alice did an amazing series. I just you... got engaged, so really? when yeah, so they said, will you shoot the menswear for Versace clothing for that season or something? And I thought, oh, menswear, it's a bit boring, and you know, it's like really tight suits and stuff. But I just got engaged, and I had this feeling of. I need to do something about this. So then I said, about, I found this website called mostbeautifulmen.com and they all lived in New York and I contacted them all. I got this casting person to help me sort it out and then I just visited them all and I, I was Donatella and they were like my hot date for the, <laughs> for the photo, basically. And yeah, that was one of the first times that I'd... I think I dressed up for Nick as a page three girl in ID once. Yeah. But that kind of made me start thinking, OK, well... This is a massive box to tick off, just sort of flirting with all these men legally, you know, <laughs> like, and um, having a picture with them. And yeah, I felt better after that about getting married. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think as well, there's not, with, with your work, the engagement with fashion is, is it's interesting because there is this kind of outside engagement with fashion. It's, it's not kind of what you were saying, it's not so involved in these seasonal changes of mm. this is a, a seasonal idea and this is, you know, we, we've got to shoot the new black or we've got to shoot the new suits or something Yeah, like normally that. an idea doesn't origin, like, happen from the clothing. That kind of comes in later, but sometimes the brief is as literal as shoot the new Versace collection, mm. which is brilliant, but I needed to make it my own. Yeah. Um, with the other one that we put in, which was... Uh, my personal request was mannequin. Was mannequin. Um, Danny Wells. She's my favourite page three girl. She's like an angel. But that, and as as a response to a brief, that was a response to a brief about asking you to make a film about politics. Yeah, um, <laughs> political fashion was the brief. Yeah. So I thought I'm just going to film page three girl and shove it in your face. <laughs> and I thought I won't film her boobs and her bum. I'll just really concentrate on her face. And it's kind of. It feels like a love affair. I feel like my work makes me look like a lesbian because I literally <laughs> love that girl and how she looks. And she's like a modern, she's a Barbie, you know, but she's so kind and gentle and sweet. And 
I want to take care of her because in her normal life she goes to Ibiza and does like 20 shoots in a day and then they get run out in the Sun newspaper and I don't think they really make that much money out of it and stuff and your career ends once you sort of hit an age and mm. I just wanted to do something that really appreciated her and her beauty and maybe that was a political statement because normally women are sort of sexualized and she is sexualized for her job that's what she does but I thought I'd just film her face as much as possible. I asked my assistants to film her face while I shot her, while I photographed her. Well, I thought I thought just the idea of not necessarily it being, even if it wasn't a response to the brief, the idea of it being put into something about political fashion, because immediately the, the interesting thing for me is it, it made you read a lot in, more into it than maybe if you saw it just as a film as by a backstage itself. film. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, or, yeah, exactly, or as a making of, yeah. or if it was on, you know, the Nuts website or something. Mm. It's very different than it being it. in this no, context of... They'd love it. I, mean, I don't know, there's not enough boobs in it. May, yeah, maybe. They prefer India's film. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think... They, and also I think that's a, a big thing with your work, that there is this idea of context with a lot of, of the fashion, or a lot of the people you shoot, rather, you put them in high fashion, you put them in a high fashion magazine. Yeah, um, put them on a pedestal, basically, exactly. and treat them like the queen for the day, because that's how I feel, and I would never want to take the piss out of them or anything, you know, I really want to celebrate them. I, 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 people catch my eye, and I just want to capture them, basically. And I think it would be so easy for it to go down that, with other photographers for it to go down that piss-taking route. It's, Definitely. There's always such affection behind Yeah, your and work. even... The, even like the blondes in the good life, that kind of might seem a bit crazy to some people that there's this family of blondes living together. Mm. But, um, but to me, it's inspiring. And they look amazing. I think so. Which is yeah. kind of the other. And also, I think, I mean, and that kind of leads us into to Hello Rory, because we've, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah. Um, and about, I, I think maybe if you talk a bit about that, because it, it it Hello does Rory. add a different dimension to it than yeah, you did Yeah, I wish get. people would understand from watching the film, but it's amazing how you have to spoon food. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, uh, I worked at Agent Provocateur, and Rory was my favourite customer. But I never met him, and he'd phone, like, all the time. <laughs> and, and you'd end up just talking to him about TV shows or whatever, because... I don't know if he's lonely or what, but I was bored in the shop, so <laughs> it was nice to stand and talk to him. And he started ordering underwear for himself. He used to buy from Ann Summers until he called us. And um, it wasn't for a girlfriend and it wasn't for a partner. It's for, for him to wear for himself in private. So I, when Nick gave me that brief about fashion fetish, I just thought, what's the kinkiest thing I've sort of been involved in? Or, and I, I just thought of Rory, the fact that he'd wear it. And everyone was like, oh, I can't believe you speak to him all the time. He's going to come and murder you one day. <laughs> and he, he lives in Ireland, in Cork, and I've never met him. But when I left the shop, I gave him my mobile number because I thought, I'm going to really miss you. And then he phoned me, like, every day. And I was like, Rory, the normal relationships, you just phone, like, once a month or something. <laughs> so then I sort of trained him. And um, he, he phased, he's thrilled about the film. I mean, I, I asked him wanted to do a film, I wanted it to be about our story, our relationship, and um, I'd like him to dress me rather than me picking out clothes for him and putting stuff on hold for him. I wanted him to look at the new Asian provocateur collection. And, and then I wanted to like get the page three girls involved and like heighten the fantasy for him and have like what he'd chosen for me, make all of their hair blonde, the same as myself, mm. and just reminded me of like a little whorehouse in Texas a bit, <laughs> that, that beginning scene. I was like, I'm obsessed with Dolly. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and he, he picked out the underwear and he also spoke to me about like, the kind of things that he could, would fantasise like, that we'd do. Like his idol is, well, his sort of sexual fantasy is Emma Bunton from the Spice Girls. So all that kind of pinkness and jumping around um, was in aid of that, really, yeah. as well. And it's, I think I sort of, you know, he'd phone, when he first started talking to me, you know, he did like sort of really cheesy underwear, but we got him to, into like big knickers and stuff, which he really like started to like, or I'd sort of describe something as, this is the kind of knickers Minnie Mouse would wear. And he'd be like, oh, right, I want two of them. You know, um, and so, I can't remember what I was going on about really, but what's, 
but basically, we'll yeah, but basically, um, yeah, Rory loves it, and he's got a girlfriend now that doesn't mind him dressing up, and so I'm just so happy for him, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope she likes the film too. I think as well, the, the kind of the great thing for me about the film is it would be so easy for it to, to kind of, you know, you talk about taking the scene out because it's Benny Hill, and it would be so easy for it to descend into that Benny Hill kind of yeah. Heidi High sort of. British seaside, you know. Yeah, a lot of those things influenced it because that's kind of like to me, growing up watching Wish You Were Here or Carry On films or Rita Sue and Bob too, that was my introduction to sex and that it had humour with it as well. Mm. It's a very sort of English way of getting it across or something. And so, yeah, that that's, plays a part in there, but I didn't want it to be completely Barbara Windsor style, you know. Yeah. I, but I just thought, oh, I'm going to put that little clip in today. I think, again, it's that idea of, of looking at a film, you know, looking at something from a different angle and the, the fact that, you know, really it's a film of you and some busty blondes bouncing around on a bed in your underwear. Yeah. Um, but taking it into that sort of diff completely different direction than you'd expect and, and ending up with something that looks totally, totally new and totally different. Cool. Which is kind of... It's a lot about what you do because... I mean, it would be nice, uh, I think, to talk a little bit about your history as well. Um, because I remember you saying that the first um, kind of commission you got was from ID magazine to do party photography. Yeah, and the first party they sent me to was some Stephen Mizell show at the White Cube. And I was working at AP at the time, and I looked through the window. And I saw like my Joe and Vivian Westwood, like my boss and Serena, and I was like, I'm not going in there, like, I'm just a pleb. So I stood outside with the paparazzi and I did my best. I just like took pictures of like Liz Hurley's ass and stuff, getting into a cab or Donatella and her bodyguard or something. And I sort of phoned ID the next day and I said, I didn't really have the balls to go in. I just stood outside and took a load of pictures. But they were like, yep, that's fine, we'll print them. And I just had this realization that you can just do what you feel. And that was really important because I didn't know that I wanted to be a photographer. They came to my degree show and phoned me and asked me to start shooting for them. But I thought, well, if I can just do what feels right and get away with it and have it published, then we're onto a winner here. And I guess that's kind of the, the same approach you take with fashion. I do, yeah. And I love, you know, I love getting briefs from show studio or just a simple brief like summer loving, like do what you mm. summertime, do what you want. and. Yeah, I just try to feed it into my own. It's like a diary for me. I'm sure when I'm 70, I'll sit back and watch a whole load of films that I've made <laughs> and be like, oh, that was me then, and that was me then. And yeah, it's kind of, it's natural. I mean, do you find a, approaching making a film different to approaching making a, uh, doing an editorial, you know, creating a, a still photograph? Is a film any technically, I mean, technically I know it is different. I probably get a little bit more conceptual with the films mm. because there's a narrative and there's a little bit more that you have to communicate and more of an idea that needs to be sort of shown. But with a photograph, it's sort of capturing it. Mainly with people, it's about the casting and the environment and where they are and who they are. But I suppose with the films, you get to take it a bit further. Mm. You get to explain a bit more. I guess there is that idea, like, in The Good Life, that you can spin out the backstory. It's not so... Yeah, to me, The Good Life feels like a shoot, you know, like, they kind of come one after the other. It's like turning a page, but mm. they happen to just move and you get to look at them for a bit longer. And it's kind of spooky staring at people, like, in their lounges when they're just sitting, like, perfectly or, you know... Yeah, it's, it, to me, that one was a bit like a, a shoot more, but just an extension, just moving it. I think as well it, it, it gives an impetus that you don't get in, in a lot of fashion films, which is the idea that there is an, a narrative, the idea that it is pulling you along. You're, you know, you're interested to find out more about these women, mm. um, which I think you get in a, in a lot of your... You, know, you want to know what's going to happen at the end of Hello, Rory. You want, you want to be kind of drawn into this story. Um, but at the same time, the story is, 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 doesn't feel like it's superfluous to the visuals. They're kind of tied in together. Um, it's never, you know, you're never giving up the visuals for the story or giving up the story for the visuals. They, they kind of marry together really Yeah, they marry together. I hate, like, backstage filming. Like, if you're doing a shoot and you're just filming it. With Mannequin, it was an exception because... And I also kind of directed that in that I just wanted it really her face. Mm. Um, but all of those films aren't photos as well. They're just... They're by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I just don't really like the 
the idea of doing a shoot and then trying to do a film on top of that shoot. It's too much. And um, I just did a film for you in Cuba. Yeah. But I left it to the last day and I wasn't shooting anymore. Did it get stolen? I just told me your footage got stolen for that. No. Oh, <laughs> Rob left it in a cab. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. It was a nightmare. The whole shoot was a nightmare. <laughs> so, no. But on the last day, you know, I... I left it to the last day. It wasn't like, oh, we're shooting these people, now we're finished, now we're going to do the film. Mm. I kind of met everyone I'd met in Cuba, and I just thought, that couple was so in love, it made you sick. And um, it was quite a beautiful thing to look at. And so we got them back, and we just got them to snog on the streets of Havana, wearing Chanel. Like you do. Yeah, and they were really good, considering they'd never like really had that experience before of mm. someone with a camera all over them. They, It, it just felt really... I don't know, like fun, like we'd met some friends on holiday and they mm. were going to make, and that's kind of what it was. It's just that we just organised with how they're going to look and stuff. Well, I think that's kind of the way that, that's sort of a good way to describe what you do generally. It seems to be that it's about meeting people and getting to know the people and then the fact that you're creating work around that is almost incidental. It's more that, you know, you're, you're makes with them and you're having a good time. Yeah. Just, and then that actually translates through to the work, which is sort of what makes it so wonderful. Well, I, I, I love meeting people and travelling around and kind of, you know, you can just have the best experiences with strangers as well, you know, just through, through the, being creative. Hmm. How do you do the casting? That's the other thing that I'm always fascinated Hang by. Hang around places, walk <laughs> around on a mission. Loitering on the street. Yeah, I can be having lunch and see an old man having lunch next to me and the next thing, you know, he's in a, in a suit getting ready to have his picture taken. Um, just wherever you see people or Facebook, internet. Just, Has that made it a lot different to cast? I mean, well, it's, um, have you always been casting via the internet or...? Internet or just literally I found people on the tube or girls that I worked with at AP and one person leads to another. And your friends start knowing what you're attracted to, so they'll start getting numbers for you too and going... Because, like, those, the girls and their mother, that was for a friend, a hairdresser, or Kimmy knew them for a hairdresser. Yeah. And so people kind of are shoving those kind of people in my direction that they think I'd be attracted to. Sometimes they're too obvious, and mm. I prefer it to be... Jean at the ball, at Chingford Ballroom Dancing Club, you know. You, you, yeah. I have to sort of go to lots of things to find people, but... If I'm going off and doing an editorial for like a, a couple of weeks in Nairobi or something, you just have to walk around and you just see people, just they start coming. Mm. And it's, yeah, there are some countries that are better for that than others, I think. I don't know, it depends on your mood. Yeah. <laughs> like, but but um, it's, it's not a problem finding people who want to take part. And I prefer doing it that way. I don't really like booking models because mm. it's just like work to them. They sit yeah. on their blackberries and... There's no kind of excitement. Well, I'm sure there is sometimes, but there's, it's, people are more excited if it's like a unique experience. Is there anyone... I know that you've already shot Dolly. Well, so I met her. I didn't like... Oh, have you not shot her yet? I took a picture of her and my friend, which I'm sort of counting, <laughs> <laughs> shooting her. No. I, don't, I think I'd have a heart attack anyway if I had the opportunity and probably just faint. So, but... What are you talking about? Idols? I was going to ask if there's anyone left that you want to. I did Lisa Marie a couple of weeks ago, and I was Lisa Marie Presley, and mm. I photographed her daughter a couple of years ago. So I was, she was on my list, and there's lots of people on, on my dream list. Barbara Windsor, Pat Butcher. <laughs> All together at the same time? <laughs> Not, no, individually, right. so we get maximum experience <laughs> for each person. <laughs> Bruce Forsyth, I love. I want to do a whole thing on like British entertainers Saturday night. <coughs> yeah. It um, grows. Dog the bounty hunter, Beth, his wife. <laughs> Amazing. Just the endless list. Is it, yeah, just watching TV, reality shows, brings them in. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Oh, Alice. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>